or that now thanks Florence for reminding me yeah that's fine um so all I did here just a bit of recap for the video c is equal to a um, and what I did, so we know that for the weeks that they have both the same amount in their accounts, we should have Carla's amount of savings and Al Alvaro's amount of savings should be the same. I have a formula to represent Carla's and a formula to represent Alvaro's, so I just let them equal to one another. Then on that, I'm just going to let them equal to one another. So I'm going to use the kind of quicker method for, I was kind of reluctant, I, I wanted to use the balance method because it's the correct way of doing algebra it's what they they tell you we should be teaching but i i think for something like this it's a little bit quicker if you just use the loop method okay so if i show you the loop method i'm going to bring that plus 40 n over the far side so if i bring that plus 40 n over the far side i get 150 plus 25 n and something that you need to know is whatever sign it is on the right hand side it becomes the opposite sign on the other side. So instead I have 40n here. And that's equal to 60. Okay. Now similarly what I have on this side. I have 150. And what I want is I want that over the far side. So then in that case I have all my letters to the left. And I have my numbers to the right. So doing that then I have 25n minus 40 n equals to 60 minus 150 okay again because even though there's no sign in front of this 150 we know that it's going to be positive otherwise there would have been a little negative sign there okay so now we have like terms together so i can go ahead and add or subtract them so 25 25 n minus 40 n so 25 minus 40 gives me minus 15 n and 60 minus 150 gives me minus 90 and can anyone pop it into chat now tell me if i want to find n by itself what do i do to both sides Divide by minus 15. So make sure that you're dividing by the number that's in front of the n. And in this case, it's minus 15. And when I do that, just make that a little bit, bring it up a small bit and make it a little bit smaller. So when I do that, what I get then is 90 minus 90 divided by, so I get n on this side. Because minus 15 divided by minus 15 is 1. And then I have minus 90 divided by minus 15 will give me 6. Now, you know that that represents 6 weeks. So if you got minus 6 there, there's no such thing as minus 6 weeks. So you'll know then that you've, you've done something wrong or there's been a sign wrong. That's the algebra that we were talking about from last year that you'll need to revise over, particularly during the midterm break. Okay. After 11 weeks, so that was part three, and I'll just pop that in there for anyone who watches this afterwards. I do have some recordings of the other ones, so if you, if you ever want them, just let me know. Okay, uh, IV. So after 11 weeks, Alvaro stopped saving, counting from the time he stopped saving. How long will it take Carla to have the same amount as Alvaro in her account? Okay, so... What we can do here is we can actually use this little formula here. Again, most of you probably popped in 11 into Alvaro's formula, found out what his total was, and then substitute n into Carla's formula. So different n's and to see when you would have um, Carla have the same amount. Again, we could use this and it'll just be a little bit quicker. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm just going to make that a little bit smaller again. And I'll upload all the workings on Schoology afterwards. So for the third part, what I could do here is I can use that 150 plus 25n equals to 60 plus 40. And instead of n in that case, I can put in 11 because we're told that Alvaro stopped saving after 11 weeks. What I'll get then is 150 plus 25n equals 60 
plus and 40 by 11, you will get 440. What I can then do is I can, I can simplify this so I can do my 60 plus 140, that's going to give me 500. I'm just going to bring over my 150 over to the far side first and I'll get 25n equals to 60 plus 440 minus 150 so remember that's a minus because when we bring it over the far side of the equal sign it gives us the opposite sign and that just comes from our balancing method okay so if you if you prefer to use the balancing method that's fine as well okay so then what I have is 25n equals to 500 minus 150 so I have 25n equals to 350 divide both sides by 25 to get my n value and what I get then is n equals to 350 divided by 25 14 weeks okay so if there's any if there's any questions on that let me know now so it's fine. Some of you might have done just a little bit of substituting. So substitute in and see. Um, Adve, why have I two of you in the chat? Okay, Grant. Now I've only one. That's fine. Um, so you can see that I have... Um, wouldn't you subtract? Um, yes. Well, you could. Yeah. How long will it take to Carla to have the same amount as as yeah that's not the best worded question as like you should say how many more weeks would it take Carla to have the same amount as Alvaro in her account um yeah in which case it would be three um I just interpreted that that how many weeks does it take Carla to have the same but yeah it's it's really the um, the question Counting from, oh, does it say, oh, counting from the time you stopped. I missed that part. Sorry, I just assumed that it was um how many weeks. Very good, yeah. So then we're taking away, yeah, the final answer then take away 11 weeks. You'll get three weeks in total. Yeah, good stuff. That's the correct answer, yeah. Sorry, I, I didn't see counting from the time he stopped saving. I missed that part. That's why it's really important. You should highlight some of the information in the question. Okay. Okay. The next part then, we had two students, Siobhan and Marie, travel from their homes to their school. The table of their traveling times and distances to the school is shown below. I'm just going to make that nice and big. So, um, so copy and complete the above table. So can I get the answers for Myra, then Holly, and can I get Siobhan from Sabina you can just type out the figures and I'll write them in Sabina yeah so you 500 400 300 uh, 200, so yeah, 200, 100, um, 0, and then we have 150, 100, 50, and 0. Perfect. Now, we could put down minus 100 here, but there's really no need because we're talking about getting to school. So we just leave, we can leave that bottom one blank, okay? Okay, so who arrives at school first? Well, we can see that Siobhan arrives at school first. So I'll just pop that in there beside that. Siobhan. Calculate the speed of each student. Oh, interesting. So remember, this is going to be from the distance, speed and time um, that we did. So calculating the speed, we know we want to have speed and that's equal to... Uh, distance over time so if I'm trying to get the speed of Moira first well how far was Moira from the school she was 300 and she got to school in six minutes so 
so that gave her 50 or yeah so 300 meters six minutes um so here's the problem now with the six minutes we say it's meters per second so we need to convert that six minutes into seconds so i am going to just put underneath here six by 60 or 60 by 6 to get the seconds and then what i'll get there is 300 divided by um 360 and that's going to be a speed of yeah that's going to be a speed of 0 0.83 meters per second okay we only have two so this just kind of brings back a little bit of distance speed and time we only have two um types of speeds we have kilometers per hour or meters per second okay now that's a reoccurring figure so just so you know i'm just rounding it to 0 0.83 okay the speed then of siobhan well siobhan was 500 meters from the school and it only took her five minutes to get there okay now again what we need to do here is i need to multiply five by 60 seconds because i'm going to get meters per second so when i do that i get 500 divided by i know five by 60 is 300 and i will get 1.6 meters per second and that's the speeds so the only way you could get three kilometers per hour advate would be is if you changed all of the meters into kilometers so you would have to say that 300 is 0 0.3 of a kilometer and then you would have to change the time into decimals of an hour um well i you can you can round it up if you want um they didn't say here i just leave it as 1.6 okay so just be careful with that advert because it's it is meters and then it is minutes so if you wanted to do it as um kilometers per hour i would then have to the answer for the first one would be uh 0 0.3 divided by and six minutes would be six over 60 which is one tenth 0 0.1 which is three kilometers per hour for the first one. Yeah, that's fine. And then for the second one, you would get 0 0.5. So if you're doing it in kilometers per hour, this one is 3 kmh. Okay. And for the second one, then I get 0 0.5 divided by, um, so five would be five over 60, which is one twelfth. So that's, divide by 1 over 12 and that will give you 6 kilometers per hour if you're doing it in kmh okay okay so who lives the farthest from the school give a reason for your answer um obviously siobhan lives the furthest from school because we can see that her distance at zero minutes is 500 so that's what you'd write in there at what time are the students the same distance from school at four minutes i'm just flying through these now just because i want to get onto the notes for today and write a formula for each student's distance from the school at any given time state the meaning of your letters using the formula okay so can i get um adve can i get a formula from you please and Janelle, can I get a formula? So Adve, can I get Moira's formula from you? And Janelle, can I get Siobhan's formula from you, please? Yes, very good. So the first one then for... Moira, we'll say M equals, and it's 300 
minus d50 n or we yeah we can call it n we can call it m whatever it doesn't matter um just make sure that you write that m equals moira distance from school and n equals uh the meters oh sorry minutes minutes okay just make sure you get that okay um then janelle yes so the starting point siobhan equals 500 and it decreases each time by 100 per minute so we put multiply that by n very good yeah and obviously then a way of checking that is if i put in here if i put in for n here zero then what would happen is i'd get 300 which is true Similarly, if I put in zero here, I'd get 500. And I can check that for any of those minutes. Okay, if there's any questions on those, you can pop it into chat now. Today, we're going to start off with just drawing, um, I'm hoping to get this done, drawing linear functions. I'm just going to copy this guy here. And this here is my y-axis. So sorry, I forgot to um, record this again. So this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis. My x-axis is the horizontal part. So that's the flat part, the part that runs along the bottom. The values that you input, inputs, really, really important there, are put on this axis. So when we're looking at this axis, when we're going to look at the question, that will be time. That time is what we input. The second thing is the y-axis is the vertical part of the graph. So that's this part here that shoots up. Okay. The output that corresponds to each input, output is the key term there, will go on this axis. Okay. So I'm just going to flick on to the question. Um, if you want to just go ahead and screenshot that and then I'm going to go on to the question. I will put all these up on Schoology later, so don't worry. Um, and they will be after the next class because I have a class right after this, but they'll all be up there. Okay, so go ahead and screenshot now and we're just going to go through a question. Okay, and paste in here. Okay, so we're going to practice drawing, um, drawing um, a graph of this. Okay, so again, I'm just going to get out my ruler um so get out my ruler and i'm going to draw my x and y axis now the first thing that we always check here is you can see my time is in minutes and i have six of them okay so i have six one two three four five six seven i'm going to need kind of seven gaps we try and make sure that our boxes or where we space them out that they're all even. So some of you will have boxes in your copy. You'll see now in a second on my ruler, I'm going to have certain um, distances like uh, centimeters and stuff. So I'm going to use them. And then what we have is we have the distance needs to go up as far as 500 and as low as zero. And I think ideally we'd be best off to go up in the 50s. It'll just make it a little bit neater. Okay, so let's get out our ruler. So, so you can see my ruler there. It has little gaps on it. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it right down here, right down the bottom. And I am going to draw from there the whole way across. So one, I'm going to go for every two. So one, two, three, four, five six and i'm going to go out as far as seven just so i have enough space i can rub it out afterwards it's always advisable to draw these graphs with a rubber or sorry with a um, pencil okay and that way you can rub out if there's an issue and you can trace over it then and pen afterwards and always with a ruler don't want to see anyone drawing graphs without a ruler okay so the next one then just bring my line of my ruler down there and so on that, I'm going to have, if I just count, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, up to 300. 350 is eight, 400 is nine, 450 is 10, and five, 500 is 11. So I kind of need 11 boxes up. 
So if you're doing boxes in your copy, I'm just going to use, and this time I'm going to just go by the centimeter rather than two centimeters. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And I'm just going to go up as far as 12 just to cover myself. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set my ruler out here and mark off the different points. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Okay, perfect. And then down here, just going to do the same thing here. So I have... Make sure that's straight. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so I'm going to take off my ruler now because I don't need it. And all I'm going to do here is this is my, so make sure to draw my little arrows here to say that they keep going. So I have one, two, three, four, five and six and that's time and minutes okay no questions there so far okay and then here i'm just going to go up in one hundredths but i know then that's a hundred i know those middle ones are fifties two hundred three hundred 400, 500, okay, so I also have then um, 600 if I need it, but I don't need it, okay, that's perfect, and that's a nice big graph as well, so you want them to be really, really big as well, and um, just one thing I need to put down here is that this is meters, so we always label them as well, okay, now I'm going to take a blue pen and I'm going to plot Moira's graph. So when I'm plotting the graph, I look at my time, so zero here, and my distance. So we can see at zero, and zero is this corner part here of the graph, okay? So we can see at zero that Moira is 300 meters from the school, and 300 meters is there, okay? Then I have at 1 minute 2.50, at 2 minutes 200, at uh, 3 minutes 1.50, so I'm just plotting points now, at 4 minutes 100, I am 5 minutes 50, and then at six minutes, zero. And then what I can do is I can take out my ruler again and I just draw a line through all of those points. Okay. And if I'm really accurate, it will go through all of them because it's a linear function. And guys, one of the things I'll say to you is if it doesn't go through all of them, then you can see here what happened here was that I.e. 100 should be or sorry 50 should be actually about there okay so that's just where i made a little mistake with the graph you should be it's a little bit harder on the ipad you should be way more accurate than i am at the minute because you will be on your copies um and these are linear functions so they should go through they should go through um the line should go right through them okay so that's uh moira and i'm just going to label that as m there and then we're just going to plot Siobhan's then. So I'm going to plot Siobhan in red. So at zero, she's 500. So if you see here, zero, she's 500 at zero. And I'm just going to plot her the whole way down then. So 500. Oh God, you can't really see that very well. Let's use green maybe. Yeah, green's a bit better. At one minute, she's 400. So roughly there. At two minutes, she's 300 there at three minutes at two minutes 300 at three minutes she's 200 so there at 
uh, four minutes she's 100 so that's where our lines cross over and at five minutes she is zero so there okay and then I'm going to get my ruler out and draw a line between all of those points and that is how we draw our graph and I'll just put an S in here okay so that's how we represent it on a graph so when we look here at this we can actually tell a lot of the information that was asked of us off of this graph so for example we can see here at zero minutes that Siobhan is 500 meters away from the school and that Moira is 300 so obviously Siobhan lives further we can see where when the two of them meet where the two lines cross and that's at 100 uh, meters at four minutes we can tell from here looking at this who is the last person to come in so we can see that Moira takes the longest Siobhan is the first person to get in okay and I suppose as well this slope tells us that's actually to do with the change so when you look at our formulas on the last page that has to do so Moira decreasing every time by 50 and Siobhan decreasing by 100 that's in our formula as well okay so that's all it all you have to do to graph them um i'm going to just start